guys, this is Christine with Dogs for Life, Whole Dog Training and Wellness. And I just wanted to jump on for a little bit and talk about potty training. I recently wrote a blog in regards to potty training puppies outside. However, it kind of dawned on me that potty training just doesn't happen with puppies. It happens with dogs of all ages. So sometimes you might adopt a dog that might be two or three years old, or maybe an older puppy. And even like me recently, I adopted a 10 year old dog um, that came from a rescue uh, in which he was uh, living most all of his life. So he lived in a dog run where he peed and he pooped all the time. So bringing him into a home was like potty training. So potty training is the same, whether it's a puppy or whether it's an adult, it's all basically done the same way. So I wanted to sit down and talk to you about uh, potty training in general um, and maybe get a little bit more in depth uh, in regards to how to potty train than the actual blog went uh, through. So with that being said, let's just kind of start uh, with when you get a new dog, regardless of the age, potty training and crate training kind of go hand in hand. So one of the big problems uh, when it comes to potty training is people often bring in a new dog and they just let them have freedom of their home. And a lot of us have an open floor plan, meaning uh, the dog can roam a very large area. And most of that time, your puppy and or your dog may be out of sight. So when you're just bringing home a new dog, you wanna make sure that you establish a potty place before you give them freedom of your home where accidents can happen. And so I generally start with um, either a penned area for a uh, young puppy and or I gate off a room for maybe an older dog uh, and utilize my kennels. And so um, to start potty training, uh, the first thing is you have to establish this routine. And so I will tell you, potty training a puppy is a lot easier than potty training an adult dog. And the reason is a puppy tends to have to potty more frequently than an adult dog. And so the general times in which you potty um, a puppy, and then we'll talk about an adult in a moment, is after they wake up, after they eat, every waking hour. And so, um, and after they play. So for example, if you took your puppy out to potty and then you came in and the kids played with the puppy for about 10, 15 minutes, you need to take your puppy outside again. So the problem with puppies is they don't really recognize the thought and the body, meaning they don't um, immediately think that, um, hey, I got to go potty. Sometimes they're playing and they're active and then they just go. And so they don't even realize that they have to go. The body just does it. And so that's very similar to humans, you know, as we're raising our kids and you have small infant uh, ch children, um, you know, they're wearing diapers. And so fortunately, training dogs is not as lengthy as tr potty training children. But it still requires some time. Um, and so with that being said, um, for an adult dog, they don't potty as frequently. Um, and so generally what I try to do is, you know, pick a weekend or pick a stretch of time that I'm going to be home more. And I try to um, entice the dog to drink a little bit more um, than I normally would. So I use like a chicken broth that is low sodium and or I take tuna water and, uh, you know, put it into a container and add more water and, and add that to their uh, water bowl. But whatever I can do to entice them to drink uh, a little bit more, that will give me the opportunity to set a routine in. And so part of setting that routine in, as I mentioned, is going to be your crate training. And so for puppies, you know, keeping in mind that puppies sleep probably about 16 to 18 hours a day. 
And so utilizing your crate, instead of letting them lie around your house wherever they want, and then you get busy doing dishes or your laundry or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, checking emails, making videos, um, whatever, um, that if your puppy wakes up and you're not keeping an eye on them, you're going to have an accident. And so this is where containment is going to be really beneficial. Um, so utilizing your kennel or utilizing a pen area, it keeps your puppy contained. The idea is once they wake up, you're going to take them immediately outside. And so you're going to walk around with them. Try to always use the same area of the yard. So if they have an area where you want to select for them to do their regular pee and poop, um, pick that area and always go to that same area. So don't allow your dog to wander all over the yard because then they become distracted. And so pick that one same area. Now let's say, for example, um, you're out there and your puppy hasn't pottied and it's been five minutes. And so a lot of times people ask me, well, how long am I supposed to stand out there? Well, I don't. Uh, I give the puppy probably about like, you know, five minutes. If the puppy hasn't pottied by then, I bring them back into the house and I put them back into their kennel. And so instead of giving your puppy freedom of your house where they're going to have an accident, I put them back into confinement for a short time, give them about another five minutes or so, and then I take them outside. And then I kind of repeat that until my puppy is potty. And so with that being said, you know, if you have a large family or you have kids or you have a spouse or other people that are living in your house and everybody's a part of it, you don't really know when your dog is peed, when your dog is pooped. Um, and so having a schedule is going to be really beneficial. So what I did is I made you this handy, lan uh, handy dandy little sheet. Let me see here. Um, which is a potty schedule. And let me just kind of explain how this works here um, so that you can kind of utilize it. And so um, obviously we got the days across the top and then you got the times running down um, the, uh, the side from 6 a.m. till 12 uh, a.m. Obviously most of us go to sleep before that or maybe not, who knows, maybe you're on a night schedule or something of that nature. But what I do is use a series of X's and O's and then I block out times. And so what you want to do is every day should be a carbon copy of the day prior. So schedule is going to be very important. So even if you have a very busy lifestyle, the reality is there is some consistency within your time frame. And so we generally always wake up at the same time and so forth. So with that being said, you want to create a schedule that's conducive to your lifestyle and the people who are in your life. Keeping in mind the age of your dog, if your puppy is young, they're going to have to potty more frequently. If your dog is a little bit older, they can generally hold it um, in, in general. Um, so with that being said, so what you want to do is um, start every day, again, basically the same. So an example of that would be, let's say I get up personally about 4 a.m. in the morning. I let my dogs out to go potty. They usually pee and poop. And so in that time frame, I generally will write, you know, an X for pee and an O for poop. And so this way I can kind of keep track. Obviously, my dogs are potty trained. They're adults. This is what I did when they were younger. Um, and it helps me to be a little bit more scheduled. Um, from that, then you might want to put an F down on your sheet every day. Let's say, for example, at 6 a.m., you're going to put an F all the way across the board. F standing for feeding. You cannot get your dog to potty regularly if your feeding schedule varies and or if you free feed. Free feeding means you put the bowl down and you leave it throughout the day. That's a no-no when you're trying to actually do potty training. So what you want to do 
it is pick times that are going to be more convenient. If it's a young dog, I generally do something around um, 5 30, 6 o'clock. That's just because it's conducive to my time. And then I like to feed in the um, mid afternoon. This way I can make sure that my puppy has been um, cleared out of their system with peeing and poop before I put them back into, uh, into uh, a night kennel and get them to go to sleep through the night so I'm not having to wake up. Um, but anyways, so what, where we want to do again is, let's say, for example, you put your F down, you're feeding your dog um, at six o'clock. Then you might want to take your, pu your puppy outside because now you fed them. After you feed them, you're going to have to take them outside again. Maybe you're gonna take them for a little walk or have one of the kids take them for a little walk, play with them for a little while, and then they can have freedom of your house for about an hour. Then what you wanna do is take them outside because every waking hour, remember, you're gonna to have to take them outside. Once you take them outside, then you're gonna put them in your crate. So let's say from six o'clock to seven o'clock, your puppy's out. Now I gotta get busy getting my kids ready and get their lunches made and get them ready for school. So during a busy time, I'm gonna put my dog back in the kennel because I can't keep an eye on them. Now, once I shoo my kids off to school and, and whatnot, I can bring my puppy back out, take them outside, get them potty. I'm marking X's and O's. And so every day I'm going to do exactly the same schedule. So my crate time and my potty times are going to be the same. So every day between eight and 10, I'm going to crate, I'm going to crate my dog. And then my puppy's going to come out from, um, from 10 until 11. And then I'm going to crate check, put my puppy back in their crate from 12 and two, two. And then I'm going to take my puppy out at two. And then from three to four, we're going to take him outside. We're going to do some training. We're going to go for some walks. We're going to get some cuddle time. We're going to play. And then I'm going to put my puppy away again for another couple of hours. Take my puppy out. I immediately take him outside. I get him to potty. Then again, the kids can play with them. We have some um, cuddle time. We uh, do a little walk. And then I'm going to put my puppy away for another hour or two. And then I'm going to take my puppy out. And every day is going to be exactly the same. In doing this and feeding your puppy at exactly the same time and then having the same potty schedule. And if you have multiple people, this way people are marking X's and O's in the appropriate schedule so that you could begin to look and say, hey, it's three o'clock. My puppy hasn't potty. Who's taking the dog out? My dog's got to go poo poo. And you know, based on a visual. So, keeping a visual to help you to train your puppy and to know what times your puppy is pottying and how frequent are they pooping through the day. And did they do that poop? And who was the last one to take them out? It can get all confusing if your family is. Uh, large and you're not keeping track. So by keeping track keeps you on schedule, keeps your puppy on schedule, keeps your puppy in crate training in and out so they're not having to minimize accidents and they're not having accidents in the house. And then once your puppy is beginning to get the gist of going outside, which by the way, you will want to take a reward outside with you, and so I generally, when I open the door, I tell the puppy outside, and then we get into the grass area. I wait for them to do the potty. And while they're pottying in an unexcitable, soft voice, I tell them, go potty. Now, some people will say, go potty. Some people will say, hurry up. Some people go pee pee, you know, whatever it is. But you want the family to be consistent in saying that. Once your puppy is pottied, lean into right where they've pottied them and give them a cookie because that's where you want to reward them. You want to reward them. Now, you know your puppy will start to understand the process when they try to fake you out. What you'll end up seeing is taking your puppy out and your puppy will do a fake squat and they'll stand up and they'll look at you and they'll be like, where's my treat? And at that point in time, you know, your puppy's getting the idea. And then from that point, 
um, giving your puppy a cookie at the potty time can become intermittent and eventually go away because we're not going to continue giving your dog a cookie throughout their life because they've potty. So just like our kids, when we're raising our kids, you know, they get a lollipop, they get something. But, you know, when they're in their 40s, we're not giving them lollipops, right? Hey, at some point, the lollipop goes away. Same is true when we're doing potty training for dogs. Now, I'm going to talk about a little bit of some pit areas. And what I mean by a pit area means, you know, um, we're struggling in an area when it's not working, uh, when it's not working according to regular schedule time it means something's not right i'm not sure what's going on but something's not right so depending upon where you get your dog the age of your dog can also play a part in as i mentioned potty training so i have worked with families and have seen this happen where you have um you adopt a dog that comes from you know a pet store and it's a puppy that gets put in a pet store and they're usually put into these glass cages with metal uh, uh, wire and the potty falls through the wire, hopefully, or maybe it doesn't. Or maybe you have a breeder um, that didn't clean up the paper as frequent um, as they should, you know, for a litter of puppies and the puppy stays with them and or you've had somebody who has pee pee train their puppy on a potty pad. Um, all of these can kind of cause um, difficulty in training your puppy to go outside. And in some of these cases, it actually creates what we call dirty dog syndrome. And dirty dog syndrome is a condition that the dog has learned to live in their filth. Because generally what happens when puppies are um, are in a litter, they kind of wander out of the bedding area and then they potty on paper and then they kind of wander back into the bedding area and they cuddle up or they play. And if that's not being cleaned up every day, the dog is basically living in that filth. The same is true, for example, the 10 year old dog that I um, adopted, he lived in a dog run and in that dog run is where he peed and he pooped. So when I brought him into my house, Obviously, he had no idea and he wanted to pee and poop in the house because he wasn't used to holding it and going outside. So for a 10 year old dog having to potty train, I was going through the same steps as I'm explaining to you now. But what we want to do is talk a little bit about this dirty dog syndrome because dirty dog syndrome could sometimes become very difficult. This is where you take the dog out, the dog, you stay outside and no matter what you do, the dog will not potty outside and you bring them back into the house. And when you bring them back into the house, they immediately pee or poop in the house. And that's because they're used to potting in the house, potting on that potty pad not being outside. So in these cases, you've got to be very patient. And so again, containment is going to be your best friend. Um, and so containing your dog, making sure that you're taking your dog in and out, in and out. Now, if you have a dog that's been used to potting on newspapers or pee pee pads, what you want to do is take that pee pee pad and put it outside. No pee pee pads in the house because that's giving your dog permission to potty in the house, which we don't want to do. So you want to take that pee pee pad and put it outside. And every time you bring your dog out, you want to take them to that pee pee pad and then have them smell it in that area. So that's one way to kind of um, work with, uh, you know, dogs that have either been pee pee pad, newspaper trained and or have dirty dog syndrome is again to kind of continue um, to get them outside, but utilizing the potty pads um, outside and not in the house. Anyways, there's a lot of different tricks of the trade and so forth, and every dog is an individual, so we never really know um, exactly um, what's going to happen with every dog. But this video, along with the blog, should give you a pretty good understanding of how to potty train your dog and what to do. So with that being said, 
I just want to say thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, share, join us on dogsforlife.com for uh, great content. Um, and so I will post the uh, potty schedule for you to download here and on the website. And again, I just want to thank you all very much and have a beautiful and blessed day. Again, thanks so much. Bye-bye now.